Good morning, good morning, good morning, my lovely people. Welcome to Shop Talk with Mel. Uh, today's topic is walk it out. We got so much going on that we pretty much we gotta walk it out. So I had to play walk that walk though. That's the jam. <laughs> like, it is the jam. Exactly. What up? We got Nick in the building. Hey, hey. Good Saturday, my people. Hey, hey, it is definitely a lovely Saturday. Listen, we got to talk about, we got a great show lined up for you today. We have the Q-tips. We have um, Hot Topics with Nick The Voice. We know we're going to talk about Megan McCain, Bill Cosby. Um, oh, Tabitha Brown. We'll talk about Tabitha Brown for those who don't know Tabitha Brown. She's an influencer. And um, Wendy was talking about her and her stuff, but we'll get into that. Also, Shikari Richardson, we're definitely going to talk about that. So we got a great show planned and we might as well just jump right into it. Yes, yes. <laughs> There's been so much going on this week. So much going on. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, I want to start off... Um, by saying we lost a valuable player to the Shop Talk team. Um, rest in peace, you guys look her up. A filmmaker, uh, Marquette Jones is her name. She's an attorney, she's a filmmaker. She does, uh, did my Facebook page. She was also on the show sh several times out of California. She, she, kept, it, she kept it rolling. She kept it rolling. Um, so if you listen to old shows and you'll hear her name, or if you see her name, Marquette Jones, a filmmaker, she worked with uh, Spike Lee. Um, just her bio, wow. her bio was crazy. Um, yeah, but she passed two days ago. So we're about to do it. We was on the first, my very first show. We're, we go down to the radio station. I call her on the phone and she happened to be in town because she's from California and she happened to be in town. I was like, all right, you're going to be the first guest. She said, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I went and got her. Never forget. It was June 2nd, 2010. And we did it. Wow. Yeah, we, we did that. It was the first time on there. I didn't know how to work a board. Still got some complications. I was hanging up on people. <laughs> like, like the callers would call in and I was like, caller, you're on live with Shop Talk. And they'd be talking and I hit the wrong button. Oh, it was crazy. It was fun though. Oh my goodness. It was a lot, it was a lot of fun. That was my the yin to my yang. That balance. So yesterday, yesterday was the 11th, your 11th year? June 2nd. Yeah, yesterday. That was All right. June, not July, not July, June, oh, a month June. ago. Okay, <laughs> okay. 
Oh, 11th year in one month. Yeah, right, there right, you right, go. Right. There you go. I need some. I need some sound effects. Where we at? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put some sound effects out there. I need to like. There we go. That was. That's the better one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it, it. That's. I marked the eleventh year. Doing it up for. Um, and actually, I would like to thank my listeners. And then we like. Okay, let's take this on. Let's get to. Um, you know, you know, we watch radio. Remember back in the day, it used to be watching radio. So you had to make sure you got the energy and that's what we do. We bring the energy. That's why I'll be, you know, I think I'll be like, I, I need energy. And I think I need some energy. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I need energy. I'm like, don't come. If you don't have the energy, it's just like work. If you don't, if you don't feel like being there, don't come. Because what happens is when you, you have energy and people don't have the energy, they pull off of yours and then everything's down. So it's like, nope. Come on, man, I need your help. So we're going to give you that energy. Um, but I wanted to put that out there. That was a hard pill to swallow. That was definitely a hard right. pill to swallow. Um, I know she beat cancer a few years back. She was diagnosed and she beat it. And this one was just like, wait, hold on. What are we doing? You, you know what I mean? So her- I, I was wish they could that we can find a cure for that. That's just yes. That's Her, I can't. I can I'm having some like distortion in your voice. Okay. I was saying I wish we could find a cure for that. Yes. Yes. Like I, I definitely do. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And um that's what we did. We we did it. It was like everything. And you know how you have that person that you you know you bounce ideas off or you'd be like, okay, listen. You know, and, right. and growing up together, it's like, you do your thing, I'm going to do mine, whichever one make it, we got each other, you know, that type thing. That was her. And I do remember when she was working at um, her first job, Original Cookie, and she called me from California. She called down. And see, this wasn't the cell phone, so it wasn't a free call. <laughs> she called me. She was like, I can't do I serve, screaming. It was Michael Jackson. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so you know, you know how young we oh, were. Oh, I'd have been screaming, passed out, and everything else. Oh, I'd have been like all the rest of Michael. Yeah, listen. Always it was always good energy. Always good energy. So much fun. And we were always so happy. And it was genuine. She was happy for me and vice versa. I'm like, it don't have to be me. I'm happy somebody I know doing it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so yeah, so I wanted to put that out there. So if you see like the Facebook page, you know, uh, slow or something, I'm trying to do what I can do. Right. <laughs> try, you know, trying to do what I can do to get it going because as busy as she was, she made time for me and I appreciate that. She'd be like, all right, right. you know, or she would train the Shop Talk staff and be like, okay, you got to do this, you got to do that. And she was also my attorney. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Your yeah. family too. So yes, like, yes, yes, crazy. yes. And see, that's what's up big time. It's like, oh, boom, boom, boom. That, that's what's up. But what I will say is that um, don't be trying to get us today after I put that information out there because I got a backup. <laughs> I got a backup. I'm like, whew. All right, here we go. Are we ready? Let me put. We are ready. All right, let me put this uh, phone number out here. Nick, you know I'd be messing up. Uh, 619-902-2287. 619-902-2287. And she also used to tell me, like, I remember when she was across from me, she would be pointing. Because I'd be getting to talking, you know. So she, she was like, like, you do me, Nick. You'd be like, the number. Yeah. <laughs> How you be like, I was like, we got to get a passcode or something, some type of like blink. Uh, yeah, yeah, sign we'll like, work on that. yeah that's, that's what we do. We'll work on that. All right, we got, um, we got Rugal in the building. Let's get him going. Hey. Hey. Did y'all your... talk about that concert yet? Not yet. No, not, not yet. Not yet. Here, Rugal. <laughs> I'm ready. 
All right, you giving it up for Rugo the movie guy. Now, what concert are you talking about? Nick, no, what concert I'm talking about? The 90s. Oh, did you go? Girl, I was in row D right there on the stage, smack dab on the stage. Yes. Oh, so you and did they know. brought the energy. Yes, they did. Now, I listen. Wait, I, wait, I, wait, I, wait, wait, wait. It's a video of me. On YouTube, there's somebody recording me singing to Dina Howard at karaoke. Oh, right, right. Everybody know I can't sing, but I can talk. Now I heard. Let me tell you what I heard first. I heard that Case brought their leather coats from the nineties. Did they have a? Did they have somebody had on a leather coat on stage yesterday? He did, but he took his coat off. I know he did. Who gonna wear a leather coat? I mean, I understand it's Ohio, but you gonna wear a leather coat in July? Well, it, was, it it got a little bit chilly last night, so leather coat chilly. Nah, I wouldn't leather coat. All chili. right, oh, that's all. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so who else performed? Chili. Who else performed? Black Street. The Black Street was the last one, and listen. The advertisement they put out there, the first face you see was, was who? Teddy Riley. Where was Teddy Riley? Huh, Teddy Riley, where was you at? I was expecting <laughs> to see Teddy Riley, Riley too. <laughs> I was on Black Street without the voice machine. I was appalled, but you know what? They did the doggone thing. I was going to cuss. They did it. They did the thing. They brought that energy Look. for real, for real. They was passing out roses off, man, because I wanted one. My husband was looking was up at me. When, he was, when they asked who wanted roses, I was like, me, like wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, W-A-Y-M-E-N-T. <laughs> they was passing out the plastic roses? No, baby, that was real. Okay, so now they're passing out real roses. Okay, so we have graduated. We have graduated. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, and another thing I want to know, did the concert start on time? Now, see, I rolled by, and I didn't hear no music. So what was that, intermission? And what happened to the talent? I remember we used to open up for the artists that used to come. Do right. they still do that now? No, they had a DJ. They have been, but we were walking in right at, so they started right like 7.30 on the nose. They started, Dina came out. And now, the okay. longest was like getting Black Street out on the stage, but they, they got out there and they did their thing. Okay, Rugo, what's your thoughts? I didn't go, but someone was uh, simulcasting it while they was there. Okay. <laughs> Save me the price of admission. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I just I just kind of felt like that Adina Howard, like that whole set was like kind of like it was no from what I could tell, I didn't feel any energy. No one was excited to be there. Like it was this, I don't even think she was excited to be there. See, you know? didn't we just talk about that, Nick? Now, didn't we just, three. wait, didn't we just talk about the energy? Yes, we did. You were the time Black this. Street, the case of Black Street got there, didn't it? You know, especially Black Street, they was really on it. But yeah, because that was the first, the first one and, you know, everybody's still getting there and everything. It wasn't, as much energy with Adina until she sang her uh, Break her, in the morning. Yes, that one. And teach her the panties, you know. She tried Oh to get yeah, that teacher. That okay. Listen, you sounded like Teddy Riley was there because your microphone is doing something different. So I don't know what's wrong with this crazy phone today. Okay, say, wait. Say it. check, baby, check, baby, check. Uh, one, two. Right. Check, baby, <laughs> check, baby, <laughs> one, two. <laughs> I am the no, rum shaker. Uh yeah. it's that still no, you're still, see if you can sign off and sign back on. Are you able to do that? Yeah. I see, put the, lead a camera where it's at. The camera's fine. It's the, boy, it or maybe, you know what? Maybe try mute and unmute. Maybe that'll work. Okay. Um, all right, so let's see, can Nick? Okay, that is the mute. Let's see. What, look, live broadcast, making it happen. This is hey. really Nope, you still it's sound it's like Teddy same. Riley, but that's okay. We know Teddy Teddy on the show was spirit. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Let me go out and come back in and see if that'll work. Okay. All right. Uh, Rogo, you ready for the fourth? 
No, no. <laughs> Not Why? at all. I just I just went out to go buy some ribs and I was like, this is ridiculous, man. How what were they high? When I went one place I went to, they were like, it was like 44, they were four, 444 a pound. Is I ended up buying right? them because because they were scarce. And I was like, man, which came to like $40 for two. I was like, I was like, God, you know, but I had to get them because I, I wanted them, you know, you know, whatever. But then I went down the street to another store and they had a way more reasonable price. I don't even know how much it was a pound. Well, but don't, it was, well don't say it out loud because I want to go grab some yeah. and I don't want them. Well, I ain't say where. Okay. I'm like, I'm like, don't say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. All right. Let's see if Nick, is Nick Teddy Riley right now? Check, baby, check, baby. One, two, three. Hey! <laughs> hey, much better. She back. All right. All right. Hey. Much better. All right, I'm glad that the concert uh, went well for the person that went. Me and Rugo didn't go, and we got the, hmm, what happened? But energy, you have to have that energy, especially if you're performing. And what's so crazy is, you know who had energy? Like TLC, uh, Left Eye. Yes. Left Eye always had, like, she put in 100%, and I felt like I paid, I paid for a performance, and she gave it. Yeah, but Left Eye was like, what, 30 when she died or something? Yeah, but they all were pretty young. Yeah, but I'm yeah. saying like Adina Howard, what, on the wrong, she on the wrong side of 50, ain't she? <laughs> you said the wrong uh, side. She, <laughs> she, 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 now, I was mad at that wig, though, boy, you listen. What wig? <laughs> Wait a minute. What wig? Did you take a picture? You know we supposed to show uh, people. We got the show. Listen, I got, I got the live <clears> picture. I got the live video on my Facebook, girl, go on and see it, because I, I zoomed in. I was right there anyway, and she was what? close to the say. Oh, uh, I wonder it was, she must have got somebody hey, in town. Hey, Nick, Nick, have you ever watched that. Cowboy Bebop? Uh-uh. Okay, it's a, it's a Japanese anime. She's up there looking like Spike from Cowboy Bebop. You crazy. <laughs> Listen, no, Google the picture. You'll like be like... like but, uh, looking like So, so... So she wasn't a Dina. He said the wrong side of 50. I mean, it was, did she look okay? Yeah, she looked, she looked, I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I'm I, I'm making an assumption she that she over 50. And everything, but yeah. yeah, she was, she was, but it was just like, it was just like no inner, it, like, it was just, no, it, it seemed like no one was, like everybody was like, they're like, okay, she came with the price of admission. You know what I mean? Because okay. you know, people was, people was treating her with like like how they do at the movie theater when they put up like unscramble the name of this actor. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You know, and you be like, you be like, that's easily Tom Hanks. Who's confused by this? You know what I mean? And you know, and then, then like, you know, <laughs> no one else. You know, people don't care to do it. And it's like the third time, you know, you didn't see it flip over, you know. Oh, God. See, I was, see, I was talking about how at the beginning of the concert or the intermission to, by time, we would have, you would have your local talent. Because I remember us opening up for different people. Uh, You're right. Heavy D, Kid and Play, uh, Salt and Pepper. I remember that. And if there was a delay, you put your local talent in. The local local talent also help hype your crowd because they gonna have all their friends and family there. You know what right. I mean? Right. So, That's you know, what they need to start doing again. They maybe but I, I think that done I think that, it, then yeah. it probably would have been a little bit better. I, I think I, one of the problems, though, you know, one of the problems with that is probably just like it doesn't seem like you have a lot of. I mean, at least here, a lot of like local groups are like, oh, it's this person, you know, or this, you know, everybody rapping. Well, it, it was like I mean, before we had like you you could you had opportunities to build up to that talent because you would have the all you know, all city talent show or this group would have a talent show and this kind of stuff like that. All you know, it, it, show. It, it, it so who won? Who was the dancers that yeah. won? Ooh, it, I need to. I need. It to. kept the cultivation going. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Of, of 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 talent to be able to do those things. Like if you right. were to do it Why today, I don't know what you crew bring that back. Why don't we bring the talent bring show? Bring it back. And bring it back. I, I mean, back. because there's so much talent in this area. There is, it's 
it's ridiculous. But we had people even from Farrell used to come over. I remember. Like, yes, all that talent we got over there in my town. Half but see, here's the family. thing, though. Here's what's happening that I see. I forgot what did mint condition come uh, to our area at Powers? Was it? It was some. Group. They came. They, they and came. And I was disappointed. I was disappointed because before, when when artists used to perform, they had on their best. Like your R&B singers had, they were suited, you know, like new edition, or they had a slick outfit. Somebody made their costumes. Now these cats, t-shirt and some jeans, to me, that's disrespectful. That's why I don't go to certain places because you dress sugar sharp. Some people go out and buy stuff. My, th my theory is, and always have been, they don't know me, so they don't know if it's new or not. However, you're dressed for a concert and the artist isn't dressed. To me, that's disrespectful. And then you have artists, everybody jumping on the stage with the microphone all over the place. I was like, oh, so we didn't practice? Like you just, that, I'm sure y'all didn't practice running back and forth across the stage. It's about a hundred people on stage. Who is singing? Who's the artist right now? It was order and we need order back, but go ahead. I'm on my soapbox. No, no, you good, you good. Um, right. It was, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, there, there's something. I mean, but there, there's a lack of showmanship too, though. You know, now that's Clearly. just it like out there, like, you know, and I think, and I think people pick and choose what they're gonna do based off of where the venue is. But the thing is, right. everybody buys downloads. Every, you know, everybody's downloading music. I mean, you know, on YouTube or Netflix, you know, they're helping that that base, you know, for you. But, you know, is this. What, what you going to do? And, and you I don't said it know. depends I, on the venue. Okay, so I, if you are outside, you can be outside, but no, when I say that from those entertainers. No, what what, I, what I'm saying about a venue, I'm not saying that they dress inappropriate for the weather or nothing like that. I'm just saying you might have somebody who may come to a smaller town and may not give a shit. And guess what? My if my ticket costs you know? sixty dollars, you're performing. We're coming to see you, and I. Honestly, I used to love to go for the fashion and the, the entertainment part. Not just if it was a singing artist. I wanted to see what they wore because that was what I was always into. I wanted to see how they opened up. Like George Clinton, that's like always seeing the parliament. I know I'm going to be entertained. Now, the last time I saw the parliament, and like you said, Adina's older now. I guess she's supposed, we're supposed to give her a pass. Not when I paid my money, Okay. Now, George Clinton, uh, go ahead, Pinhead. I'm, 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 okay. I'm going to let you get your point through. I went to see the parliament, uh, top of the parliament. You sound old. I, I went to go see the parliament. I the, went to see the parliament. Listen, the parliament. we sure did. But here's, here's what I noticed. Flashlight came on. It was still a good time. It was, did I? Yeah, I think I did not. I, I think I, was, I emceed that one. Did I MC it? Yeah. And uh -uh. yes, I did. I it was at Stamba. Oh, I at didn't go Stamba. to the one. So we went to the one at um at Okay, yeah. now I didn't host that one. I didn't MC that one, but I went to that one. And you know what I noticed? Now I took my mom with me. I was like, oh, let's go. I took her and I'm singing flashlight. And you know, I'm like full of energy. I'm like, flashlight. And for some unknown reason, the band couldn't catch up. My mother said, I like that tempo. Guess why? If you think back, since you were there, what they did is slowed the whole tempo down. So Flashlight was just more like a bob your head flashlight. I mean, it was the same songs, but they slowed the tempo down, I guess, for their age. You know what I mean? And what's his name to wear the diaper? I, I said... Yeah, or which man what, was it? I, no, that was, I know you're talking about. I said he really needs that mug right now. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> but oh, that was George Clinton that we saw. Not part. I didn't see. It was George yeah. Clinton that we George saw. Clinton, but they yeah. did that at the, uh, at the George Clinton concert. And, and what? But yeah, you know what? Though all of them was energetic the whole time that, at George. But Clinton guess was. what? Because it's his grandchildren. So Rugo got a point. His grandchildren. He introduced them. At the oh, end, okay. yeah, 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 and and it it I get. I guess he figured like this: if you can have so many uh, renditions of the Temptations, you know, <laughs> you got to keep Parliament alive. Because par Parliament 
it, I mean, it's 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 related to one band primarily when you think about it. like it's other people, right? Right. But, but that's um, more like a music movement, you know. That the funk, you know. His and it was his own classification. You know? It's in a class by itself. Right. Like you can't compare you know, you gotta, it to anything else. You got to keep that movement going. All right. Now, and what were you gonna say about Adina Howard? Um. <laughs> it. This is the thing. It seemed like she was relying on her vocal skills to get her through, and she didn't sound bad. But I, I wouldn't. She, she probably if if I if I had a top hundred, she might be in it. If I, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just saying. Like, I mean, she ain't sound bad, but I ain't going. I ain't going to see Adina Howard because I she know. got this. She had these incredible vocals. Okay. I mean, I don't know. Ain't well, no wrong catalog, about that. I really don't. It's just those two songs. My t-shirt and my panties on was like off the chain. Yes. That was the jam. It was like, oh, you remember that? We was always sing that at karaoke. Uh, who sing that at karaoke? You? Me and two of my friends. We would sing that every that's karaoke. That's song definitely. at karaoke, girl. That was the time mm -hmm. I went, That's the time I went to the kitchen and ordered some wings. <laughs> I need some hype music. All right, let's jump right into it. Okay. Oh, you, did you want to finish with something, Ruba? Did you want to say something? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I feel All bad because right. I feel like we're beating up on poor Adina. No, she needs to know the truth. That's why we, listen, we have to go over and taste the new restaurant and give our input. What she may need to do, though, in all seriousness, the takeout. is this get two young women dancers you like somebody that she know you know somebody who aspiring to sing and be like hey sing i'll break up. not even to back up but to kind of like put some 90s music okay let's just talk about it. the issue with 90s music is that everybody was thin because it was a whole lot of work to party <laughs> it was a, I mean, it was a whole lot of work to party. but it was a whole you lot know? of dancing too but that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. There's a lot of every everybody. Every, it was always a track for the dance floor. Oh yeah, because remember y'all you know, used to be doing like the Running Man. Remember y'all dance group? Oh everything. All that backup I mean, you know, dancers. Yeah, Did that's you know what that? I'm saying. Did the listeners know that Rugo used the jam? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. Rugo, Rugo let, let me take that Running Man and that Roger Rabbit right now. No, it ain't. You looking like I don't know. I should. <laughs> hey, I should do it. I should. Do, matter of fact, I should make a fitness video, I'm like dancing to the nineties. That's <laughs> what I was right to say. We should Listen, do we that. all be straight back Part down. Of, uh, uh, fitness uh, club. It's just dancing again, and you know, because we kept our weight down back then, because we right, were yeah. our way at a party or whatever. That's what I'm saying. You could be musty. You could leave musty. And it was exactly. all good. And it was all good to leave Musty because you, you had a reason. You got it in. You got it in. Yeah. You so left all, Musty. You didn't come Musty, but you left Musty. And when yeah. you come to the party Musty, something's That's wrong. a problem. Exactly. You know, even, even if it was like, even if she did it where she held like a, con, let's say a contest where in, in advance people at that particular town you know, I mean, I don't know how much coordination you really need, right? I don't know. You just need somebody who's going to stay on the beat and do their thing, as long as they have their thing but down, you, you know? you need it. You need yeah. it. That's you a know, great even idea. Even like, like inspiring dance students in those local communities, be like, okay, I mean, it's a lot of coordination, mm -hmm. but but it could be a great effort if you um made if you if you put a system behind it. Mm -hmm. You know? I think that that would have been a great idea when you know the opportunity to sing back up for this artist because well I don't I guess she I don't know her what her bank this you know, dance what her, what her money's her money's are looking like but you but, said so you want to bring back the backup dancers because I don't see them anymore I'm saying I'm saying if I'm a 90s artist right. and okay. I know all of my songs were like meant for dancing and the only time my songs like it was it I mean okay she had the t-shirt and panty song so that's a different category but her but main still dancing. Was, Really was it though? I mean, no, no, the backup dancers could dance to that song. Yeah, yeah, but but I mean, yeah. their tongue out, the girls could be like, whoa. But but I mean, like if you you know for the other songs that she had, I mean, if you like, let's say if you just coordinated with like local dance people and was like, or dance schools and was like, hey, if you get if you can put an act together, these are the songs we playing, 
and if we if we if you show us a video of your students doing it, they can they can perform and do this. Thing. And that's a great resume builder. You know, I mean, it would be what? it could be free to the artist, but you know. Listen, that see, that's why you hold the position off of shop talk with Mel that you hold. You got great ideas for the children. But well, it might have to be worked out, but yeah. I mean, I that's why I don't want no kids dance to t so that's all, you know, you know what I'm saying? That's, and even freak like me is kind of questionable, but I mean, you know, the but the point I think she's a PK too. PKs are a preacher's kid. I think she's a PK. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. They'd be the ones that be cutting up. Yeah. Hey. All right, hurry up. All right, let's get this. Megan McCain quits the view. Good. <laughs> that was short. Next topic, no. Go ahead, Ruben. What's your, what's your I mean, thoughts on that? I mean, was I mean, was, was she upset because because she was the only one that was speaking her her truth or whatever? Well, like what's the been like what's you know, like how Anna, she, Anna Navarro? She's a conservative as well, but she I like her. I like her. Uh. Megan gets into it with everybody, and if she can't get her way, she like throws a tantrum on television. She does not like to be mm -hmm. interrupted. This is just my views and not the views of the co-host on Shop Talk with Mel. She does not like to be interrupted. However, she will interrupt you. I, I think though, too, I think the thing is, is like this this really put let's put it out there. Okay. The only reason she was only on the show because of who her dad was and the and the and the and the stuff that Trump was saying about her father. You think so? Uh, what I read because because she was conservative she was conservative well her, her and I don't even when we talk about conservative like this she her father was conservative right and her father was not a bad guy per se you know what I mean but but it was this um I don't I don't think that there was there wasn't anything that she did that was like oh because she did this let's have her on the show no, well, actually, what because I was going to say it, it, is I have read, so you're right. I read where, I can't remember where it was a while ago. Her dad is the reason that she's on the show. Her dad told them, you know, that he would like her to be on the show. And as a matter of fact, I think she said it uh, when she gave, uh, yesterday when she gave her resignation. Now, my question is, how can he tell anybody about anything unless he the one to own the show? The no, 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 show? no. He, he he suggested it and he requested it. And then after they interviewed her, I guess it was like, okay, let uh, her be on there. And just like Rugo said, we only know her because of who her father is. And right. that's the truth. So I can see where, you know, where you're coming from with that, Rugo. I also um, would like to add that I believe that the reason that she is leaving is not at it's not her choice. I believe they just told her because she get into it with everybody and she gets on my nerves. No lie. That's why Which, I fired her. But but I think I think those <laughs> shows aren't supposed to be harmonious. Right. They're not supposed to be by harmonious by by the you know they want that tension, you know. I mean cuz why would they place her on there if they didn't you know want that perspective or whatever. You know, and the thing is, right. is that's that, crazy right. though because the, those shows they want the attention, just like the the you know the Ratchet TV. They want the attention, but then they sort of mess up relation people who've had good relationships or friendships, or that's just crazy because you know not everybody. After a while, not everybody is going to be like, okay, this is what we do at work, but then off off the camera we cool because after a while that is going to affect your relationship off camera and we've yeah. seen it with the how the real housewives of atlanta you know they well, all started out cool you know they would have their little arguments on the show and but then later on you see pictures of them partying or somewhere together and then all of a sudden now a lot of them aren't friends anymore that, yeah, but, yeah, but let's, let's, let's put it out there they probably weren't friends from the beginning anyway right it was just you know, what I mean, they, they were like, let's just put these people all together. Uh, Candy and, and which McCall it was friends. Who? They was real good friends. Uh, Phaedra. Okay, and that uh, it, they became Phaedra, friends on the show. But they, but they was like tight, tight, even yeah. after you know. Yeah. Off, yeah. Off I took the whole stab. I took the whole stab in the back. A friend of mine um, did reality television, and I asked her, and she told me that 
they even in those like I don't want to say the name, but it, those reality like Big Brother those houses and stuff like that, they would um, they would be okay, and then someone one of they said this is alleged. Let me cover myself for real. Um, that they will go in and tell you something about the other person and have you upset just to get you know get things sparky. Yeah, oh, yeah. I and mean, they got these mine, shows I'm have kidding. writers for a reason. You know, there's somebody gonna have to play the antagonist, the, the troublemaker, and stuff. I mean, like, like Nene Leaks. Y'all leave my girl alone. She ain't shit. Tell her I said so. <laughs> you my friend alive. Tell, <laughs> tell her I said so. Right, right. Like, like, yeah, she, and but here's the thing, too. She ended up becoming baby five. I think that on those reality shows, anyone is expendable. So, you know, you want to sit there, you're like, okay, well, I'm comfortable in my seat. And then you want to start crying. It's like, uh uh-uh. So do you think, I'll ask, well, we already know Nick said, bye. Um, Do you think the ratings will go up and down, Rugal, on The View since Megan will be gone after this season? I think they'll stay the same. Okay. What do you think? I don't don't think there's going to be a mad exodus for people like, oh, I'm so upset that she's not on there anymore, right? I mean, I don't don't know that, you know, but it it just seems like, the only now the the only person I want to make sure I get my shows right because the view is the one with oh I mean uh Whoopi Whoopi right mm-hmm. Whoop okay so that was the one that was started by uh Barbara what's Walters. her name Barbara Barbara Walters mm-hmm. okay at one point Barbara Walters was like she was the one who gave the show credibility to be respected on another level like right. this is who I'm bringing these are the the people I brought into that circle. I'm sure she's still involved in some way, shape, or form. But uh Whoopi Goldberg, the, the only person I think that you would have that you, you would have some difficulty replacing would be Whoopi Goldberg. I agree with you. You know, Nick. I mean, you know, but Nick, but, I mean, Nick your view. I don't I, I don't think the ratings will go down any at all. It like you said, it'll stay the same. It, heck, it might even go up. For real, now that they got rid of her. Well, uh, I mean, they're gonna probably replace her though. With somebody, nah. let's see, let's see if they re- let's see who they replace her with. What about that right. vanilla wafer? Um, <laughs> what's Candace? So, no, Candace hell Howard. no. Uh, uh-uh. uh, they ain't gonna put her on there. <laughs> they ain't gonna put her on there. Who would you? Her black card is revoked. You can't, you can't put her on there. They ain't gonna put her on. No. They're not gonna put her on there. No, nah, nah, they will eat her up. I, I would tune in just to see them eat her up. Nah, we don't, but the thing Ooh, is, that, like, and you know, her and Whoopi would that would be that would be awesome they gonna put, to see they that. Put her on Somebody there. would be outside that studio waiting because, on Candace because the thing is, is that they probably she would be an addition that would make them lose ratings because ain't nobody yeah. gonna call, ain't nobody gonna, 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 gonna watch her talk about how. Um, we shouldn't have defended George Floyd. Ain't nobody gonna listen to that for no no hour. You know what I'm saying? It ain't right. you know. And then the thing is, you got to turn back. You got to go back to that again. We should be talking about well, you know, we we shouldn't have African American History Month and all this other. You know, you oh, yeah, hear on probably, and on and on. And on. Like that's like did she like, forget what color she was born? The, 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 that's that's like I, Stacey. Did Nash. she forget like, what color she was? Her. You know, I mean, it's just like, 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 uh, like a person they wouldn't put there again. They wouldn't put Stacey Dash on the show. You know, she's trying to come back. You want to let her in? I was, tr- I was getting ready to bring her name up. Um, don't nobody want that vanilla way for neither. Like, y'all, y'all with these names, Run y'all. Wait, Rogo, would you? Y'all with these Stacey names. Stacey Dash, would, do you forgive her? Cause she want to come back. Well, come back to what? Come, come. <laughs> We understand. We forgive you. The, the, the issue, no, we'll the issue, you're back at Clueless. The issue is like... She's clueless. She's not clueless. This, this is the issue. That was the when, right role for her. When, when we talk about somebody coming back, we have to establish if they, if they were ever there. Thank okay. you. Like I said, you, you, right you know what right I'm saying? You, I mean, you know, you got to establish if they was ever even there. Great point. You know, so so the thing is, is like you gotta look at her, you know, what's her overall track record? I don't know, but I know when she came out political, 
It was, you know, she had her stance on what she wanted to do. So that was because she was clueless. But yeah. like I said, <laughs> she, they had the right, they gave that the right chick the right role in, in the right movie. Clueless. She's clueless. She was clueless as acting. She clueless in life. She just clueless. Leave her there. Leave her there. Leave her with Tamar Braxton. Oh, Tamar, Tamar Braxton. really shake it up. She on there? No. Would you would you have her come join the view? What's your thoughts no. on that? No, there's no room for her. What, what position is she going to? That's not the right venue for Tamar. What, it what, really what, isn't. What, Tamar what? is still a little bit ghettoish. Okay. Bugetto. Oh, Bougie see now, you, now, now you acting funny. Now you turn to a Sharon Osbourne. Who me? Yeah, you. I'm allowed to though. Look, you're too you're right too here. ghetto I'm for this show, <laughs> Holly <laughs> Robinson <laughs> Pete. Holly Robinson Pete, you're too ghetto for this show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nikki called you a Sharon Osbourne. I don't know, man. Somebody oh. better check out the voices of past. That past might, might be close to expiration. <laughs> mm. oh, all right, Bill Cosby. Bill yeah. Cosby was released from prison. Look, and did you see? And did you see? Wait, wait, we got to stay focused. Hold on. Before you go there, Bill Cosby was released from prison. Go ahead, Rugal. Did you see the meme I sent you? N listen, what's your thoughts? on Bill Cosby being released from prison. Oh, well, the Supreme, it went to the state Supreme Court and they found that he should not have been imprisoned. You know, so, you know, the, the law of the land has ruled in his favor. And oh. it, it makes me interested about, obviously people were condemning the Pittsburgh court that, that released him. Because remember he, he had got, his first case he won, if you recall that. And, and there was about the one where he paid her off the three point whatever million dollars, the civil. Case. No, I'm and saying it's like lady. it's the same lady. I mean, that was part of it. It's like, hey, you know, th there was a, a a settlement agreement, and she broke that settlement agreement. It was one thing I heard about it, but the the original in Pittsburgh, whatever, when he went to court there, they originally. He, he beat, he won the case. And then there was some sort of appeal. So what I understand was that they were like, the biggest problem with his conviction, his, his conviction was that they took testimony from people who had nothing to do with that incident that he was being charged with. So it was like, you, you brought, you, 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 uh, it, Muddy it the seemed, waters. Well, it seems like they, they convicted him off of um, hearsay more than more than um, more than evidence about that situation that he was currently in. And then the ramifications of that woman having a, um, a settlement agreement with him, too. So, you know, um, so so maybe there was something he should be made to get that money back. Well, she might be. She might be, you know, but who knows? He might just be like. Let me just roll over. Let me just keep going and just forget about it. Who knows? I don't know what his team is going to do. Right, give me my money Remember, back. Remember, um, there, you know, you had the court of public opinion that all said he was guilty because it was over 60 women. Now, 60 women, that sounds like a lot. And let's think back. And I don't know, you know, I'm not judging the type of person you are, but at at age 40, if you think back and keep it to yourself, how many people have you slept with at age 40? Mm -hmm. at, at, as a non-celebrity. Then you mm -hmm. go to age 60. You know, then double. So I'm like, okay, not justifying his actions at all, but I don't know his actions. So he is innocent. People feel like, okay, he was, he was released because of uh, by because of uh, malfunction, so you have those that say that I don't but, know. I and, mean, and but... they still have him guilty. But he, here's my thing: it's innocent until proven guilty. But we, as the public, 
that has changed where it's guilty and prove yourself innocent. Yeah. And well, with well, this, with the, and, and I'm gonna let mm -hmm. you speak. And with this particular case that he was um, in prison for, he handed her, this is alleged because I wasn't there, the quaaludes and she took them. He didn't put it in her drink. He offered it and she accepted it. So where, you know what I mean? Where, where's the line drawn? And that's what they did back in the 60s and 70s. If you ain't in, the just like in the and early part of the 80s. And in the early part of the 80s, Dickinson? they did that. Janice Dickinson said she lied? I think it was Janice right. Dickinson. Like, I, th I think it was her. I think it was her. Like, but, why would you? Come oh, on, go ahead. But, but I, I guess, I guess the, the thing is, is that Whatever the original court found, they didn't. They they didn't. See, they didn't find him guilty. So something something went awry in whatever that appeal process was. Somebody was mad. So 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 the thing is, is that like if he and was as proven, an example, if he is proven, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they felt that way. Maybe it was the, whoever the judge was. Who who knows? But but the issue you could look at this issue and say, well, damn, it looks like he was wrongly imprisoned. I feel that way. You know, I mean, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not saying that he was innocent, but it, I'm saying that, that you can make the argument. Are you saying that he's say, guilty? I mean, it's a free, you know, and I'm not, you know, I mean, See, let's, this, let's, I want to look at the case, makeup of the Supreme this case, Court. This is where I need, rest in peace, Marquette Jones. This is when I, where I need Marquette, my attorney, <laughs> to be like, the, you know, the legal, you know, give us the legal aspect of it. I feel like people are still saying that he is guilty. Remember we talked on, what was it, two shows ago? Where he, um, they want, they say he would be released and yeah. he, he wasn't going to a sex offender class because he was not a sex offender. And some people felt like, well, if you want to get out of jail, he might, he needs to go and do that. No, no. he was right in not doing that. My question is, I keep seeing where everybody said that he actually admitted that he did that to these women. I don't remember seeing that or hearing that or reading that. Where did y'all get y'all? Court of public opinion. And I feel exactly. as though that he was in prison based off of that. And we talked about the casting couch some time ago. Okay, some of y'all decided. Um, and if you listen to him, most of them were trying to become a singer, be, trying to become whatever. And so my thing is, if you become a singer, why you want a comedian to get in at it? arena you know what i mean to get in that circle so you came to you somebody and you what did a uh, players club what did she say uh -huh. use what you got to get what you to want get what you want and that's exactly what a lot of these women did and then now and you want to get anything paid. away from rape real rape and now you want to get paid again so if it didn't work out and your talents didn't work then okay well that didn't work now i'm going to do this and want to jump on the bandwagon i just <laughs> it's Excuse me. Bless you. I bless you. It that's just my opinion. The Me Too movement. I'm for the Me Too movement, but be honest. Be honest. Okay. Go ahead. I feel like this on that situation. I feel like this. I have been raped in okay. college okay. by someone I knew and trusted. He was drunk as shit. Uh huh. And didn't even remember doing it. I went. I could have got him thrown out of school, but I didn't. And my thing is the way I feel about that now, this is so many 20 something years later. If he was to become a millionaire today, I would be a, a fool, even if it is still within the statute of limitations, I would be a fool to run and try to sue him now and take him to court just to get some money because I should have did something about it back then. I had the chance to get him put out of school and thrown in jail, but I didn't. I had, you know, I felt bad because he was drunk. He didn't remember anything. And it took him a couple months because I avoided him. But he finally, when I was, you know, he finally came and he apologized. He was like, I'm so sorry. He was like, I don't remember anything. I don't remember until, you know, Shannon came and she, I guess. Oh, somebody you know, told him? Yeah, he she found him passed out on the steps in between our floors and took him to the room and listen, okay, beat so him up. 
Tell in me the room. this. I got a question for you. That happened to you. How did it affect you mentally? At first, it really did. It bothered me. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to be bothered with anybody. Don't want to touch me. I had a boyfriend at the time. We broke up. I didn't want to be bothered. But the fact that I let it go, I let it go. So you forgave him. Now, when he came to you, he said he he heard what he had done to you. I don't have to say alleged because you're speaking. The victim is speaking. Right. He, was that enough for you? That he came and apologized? Uh -huh. Yes. To me, that was enough. He came and apologized. He was like, Nick, I'm so sorry. He said, you know, I would never have done that. He was like, I don't even remember. He said, all I remember is Shannon helping me to the room and jumping on me and cussing me out. I don't. And he was like, I wanted to give you time before I came to you to apologize because I know you didn't want to be bothered with me, didn't want to be around me. And like I said, to me, that was enough. But still, I would be a stomp down fool if this man became a millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire. And I try to go and sue him now for money. For what? I let it go back then. I forgave him back then. So why, why do you feel as though that you will be a fool if he became a millionaire and you decided you were going to? Because I'm trying, because at, the, at that point, I would be doing it for financial gain. And you have already forgiven him. And I've already forgiven him. He has apologized. He apologized and I have forgiven him. And so at this point, it would be for financial gain. And that, to me, that's not right. It's, it's not right to do it for financial gain for what? What is it? What is financial that gain, that's for what? For financial you, gain. Yeah, you're right. But I mean, like, it still don't change the fact that it was done. It'll never change the fact that it was done. But the fact that I forgave him, he apologized to me. He came to me and apologized. I mean, truly apologize with tears in his eyes. Like, you know, I'm not type, that not that type of person, but I forgave him. I let it go. I had to let it go because if I didn't, it was going to eat me alive. I didn't tell anybody until maybe 2013. I finally, finally told my mom. Okay. Tell my me mom was like, when why did didn't you say something when then? Did it, when did it occur? It, it occurred um, in... <laughs> November of 2000, I mean, November of 1989. Now, I'm glad that you brought that to the forefront because a lot of people don't understand why not even just these women, because like I said, he's innocent. He, you know, they did not find him guilty. He's innocent. It was overturned. His legacy is innocence. So now, so this, wait, oh. wait one second. Mm -hmm. So now people can understand because you being a rape victim waited all the way from, you said 1989? 1989. To 2013 to actually say it. You have people who feel like, and I can't remember what show it was. I, oh, you know what? It was about when he first went in, wasn't it? And why did they mm -hmm. wait so long? You know, so you have somebody right here our co-hosts on Shop Talk with Mel that actually did the same thing, wasn't ready to come out until then. So I thank you for sharing your story. Truly, thank you for sharing your story. Go ahead, Rugo. I was going to say this is in the Post-Gazette, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, is what they said the reason was. They was like, why, why did the courts overturn uh, the, the conviction? Because prosecutors violated Cosby's rights by reneging on an apparent promise not to charge him, the court said in a 6-1 ruling. So, so that in a nutshell, that was it. So no one's saying that that he that these didn't happen. They're just saying that there was an agreement that there would be no prosecution. So if there is or no charges put against him. right. So if there is no agreement, you can't find him guilty. And see, right. that, that's that's where what I keep saying is he's guilty in the court of public opinion but legally this should have never been tried so he would be innocent now some people feel like oh he guilty just like oj 
you they're like oh jay doe he killed the people but he got off from the legal system he's still innocent that that is just me i can't say somebody did something and i didn't see it it's like writing an incident report you can't write what you didn't see you have to just write exactly what you saw and then it's up to whoever the judge is to determine what's right and what's wrong we can't okay. Go, they call an OJ, they'd be like, Oh, he's a murderer. Now, let me say this Do I think he did it? I have no thought on it either way. However, I ain't trying to kick it with OJ because if I decide to step off, I ain't trying to be in that position. And you know, I'm just gonna put that out there. I'm not gonna sit there and be like, If somebody tell me somebody's a murderer and they just walking around, okay, well, I don't, I won't be alone with that individual, but I'm like. They're innocent. I can't call them a murderer. I don't know who they murdered, but I ain't trying to be alone. I ain't trying to see if they really a murderer. You know, I'll be watching that Lifetime a lot. I ain't got time for the true crime daily. I ain't doing it. Go ahead, Rugo. What so so this, this is what one of the Supreme Court's justice, justices said. We hold that when a, pro, when a prosecutor makes an unconditional promise of, of non-persecution. Uh, uh, Persecution? Per, Persecution. Uh, yeah, yeah. And when the defendant relies upon the upon that guarantee to the detriment of his uh, constitutional right not to testify, the principle of fun, the, the principle of fundamental fairness that undergirds due process of law is in our um, in our criminal courts in our criminal justice system the, demands that the promise be enforced. That was uh, Justice David Norman, which he wrote that for the state supreme court majority. Okay. All right. So that's what it was. Okay. So we're the jury. The Bill Cosby case. Nick, innocent or guilty? From what that, we know. From what we know and based on that, innocent. Okay. Rugo? All I will say is that they, they, uh, see, they, they, um, they found that the technicality of of the agreement that they previously had had him in a situation where he sh where he should not have been prosecuted by that for Miss was her name Const Constant I think is her name um, but you know that do you believe the women maybe that's easier instead of just do I believe the women I believe I mean if they if, if people are saying this happened to them, I don't have any evidence to say that it did that it didn't happen. You know, the, my 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 um the the thing here is that obviously they felt even in this case it potentially happened. He just had an agreement with her not to say anything. So you know that that's the whole thing is there. So okay, you know, the, the court decision is what the court decision is. You know, my question is. Why did they wait until this man announced that he was going to buy a major uh, television network? Well, it looks like this this goes back to like 2000. I don't know when he announced that he wanted to do this, when he wanted to buy the thing. But this this goes back to like 2005 from what I can see here. You know, uh, actually, hold on. Uh, convicted of charge. They said 2004, uh, 2004 uh, was when it happened. That he offered her, I think it was Quaaludes, don't quote me on that. And she took them. Like, you took them and you're an adult. You took them, exactly. Now you want to claim rape victim and you well, want to get everyone it, it all never, over. It never was said, but, and she but, never but, said that he had sex with her. But I think I think the thing, well, this is what they're saying here when they start the article. They said, disgraced actor and comedian Bill Cosby walks free after three years in prison when the uh, Pennsylvania Supreme Court threw out his 2018 conviction uh, on charges of drugging and sexual assault, uh, assaulting Adrian um, Constant in uh, 2004, where uh, when she was a Temple uh, graduate, or I mean, I'm sorry, employee. Um, I forgot what I was even okay, reading that for. Okay, but still, it didn't come back to the forefront until he announced 
he was getting ready to buy a major network and then it came back and this is where this is all stemming from with the re, with them reneging on that uh, uh, first agreement because they brought him and charged him and put okay. him in jail after he said he was going to buy NBC then all of a sudden this came back up now I will say that you have a lot of celebrities that can pay their way out and that's why I think they kind of made him, at, you know, you will be the example. An example. Okay, I need to keep on reading. In this oh. article, it also said in 2005, Bruce Castor, who, who, who was then the district attorney in Montgomery County outside of Philadelphia, issued a news release saying that he had, he had declined to charge Cosby over the matter. Cosby then set, uh, set for disposition in a, in a separate case. I'm sorry, depositions in a, in a separate uh, in a separate civil lawsuit uh, filed against him by Castan, um, which he paid uh, which he paid her three point three eight million dollars uh, to settle in 2006. So it seemed like she might have came out with it right when it happened. You know what I mean? But yeah, back the thing then, is, and he settled with her. That was a civil yeah, yeah. But let's let's not get this. I mean, I, I guess the thing is, is like. Because what I'm hearing, like if someone, like if someone goes and they have a drink with somebody and they're intoxicated, I'm just saying drinks, I'm not even saying drugs, and they're intoxicated and that person has sex without, without their consent. I mean, the, 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 even if the drugs were openly accepted, we can't say that the sexual activity was, 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 um, was consensual. Want it. I, I hear what you're saying, but they didn't say about the sex during this case. We don't know if it was consensual or not. We don't even know if they had sex because I don't remember that. Well, right. she, I mean, she's, I mean. But if they did have sex, how do you know it was not consensual between both? They could, you know what I mean? Because well, sometimes he, he denied it. So we're the court of public opinion. He denied it, so. Well, I, I mean, well, it seems like he never actually spoke about it because he he, he had wrote this thing because he didn't think he's going to get prosecuted by her, at least anyway. But but the, but I, I guess what, from what I read here, it is seen. I mean, that's what he was he was getting charged for drugging her and sexually assaulting her. Now I don't know how you want to define what sexual dis, uh, assault oh, is. Well, I, you, you know, touch I don't. Somebody that's sexual assault. Unwanted mm -hmm. advances so, is sexual assault. So, yeah. You know. All right, yeah. let's move on. Shakari Richardson. Sis knew better. I'm sorry. Okay. Who's so happening? Let, me, let, let me bring let me say it why she didn't answer it. <laughs> Shakari Richardson, for those who don't know, she has been suspended for 30 days from the um Olympics. She made it in the tryouts and she is suspended for 30 days. So she can't run the 100 and the 200, but she can do the relay. Now, I'm going to share my thoughts. This is just my thoughts only. I said, okay, 30 days. And I understand for where the date fall before they even did the, you know, decided, okay, this is going to be her punishment for smoking weed. She tested positive for marijuana oh. in her system. And yes, she knew better. How is she, 21? <laughs> is she 21? The, the issue is, okay, the wait, issue wait, is, wait, is that wait, 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 21 years old. And you have those that feel as though, well, she's young and we've done blah, 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 blah. My thoughts on that is, you know, this is, this is your field. You know, you run track. This is where my thoughts are. Okay, y'all did the punishment. Did you look at this first? So the 100 and 200, she'll be running for herself to win the record. The relay, she'll be running for us. Okay, so and she's not on the Olympic team. Wait, wait a minute. Dude, she's on U.S. The U.S. But, but what I'm saying, the reward would be seeing it would be her, her reward. This is my record. This is this, and the relay is for the United States. Even though it is for the United States, but you understand where I'm going with that. But she'll be able to do the relay. So, but she won't be able to run the 100 and the 200 because of the date of her suspension. She did make right. a statement. She, it up for herself. she did make a, a statement and she did acknowledge that it was her. She said she knew better. And when she did the tryouts, um, right after she won, some somebody on her team let her know her mother passed. 
and different media outlets are saying that's because her mother passed so she smoked. You don't just do that. You do what you want to do. That's just my thoughts. Now go ahead, Rugo. Nick's going to be shorter. Go ahead, Nick. What's your thoughts? You said that she knew better. My, like I said, my thoughts is she knew better because this is your career. This is what you'll be known for. You were getting ready to surpass everybody's record and be known throughout the world for your running. What I understand, you know, and rest in peace to her mother, I understand what she's going through, but her mother would not have expected her to do that, to mess up her career. You, you got to stay focused when it's something like that. She oh. was young. She was old enough. She knew better. And for all of y'all that's taking that for and yeah, y'all do this and y'all listen, y'all y'all ain't we y'all ain't running track. Exactly. One, of the, one of the uh one of the shop one of the people of the shop talk crew said that uh she had smoked a weed. Uh, you know, like she probably looked in and smoked that weed, looking like man. That finish line is way up there. And you know, you had different people who was like, she breaking records smoking weed. Wonder how she is clean, you know? So that's what was going around the studio. Go ahead, Rugo, what's your thoughts on Chicago? Yeah, I, I have, I'm, in, I'm just getting familiarized with this. So, because okay. Okay. I, I, cause you're saying, because what I don't understand is that you're saying she can still run, but she won't be representing the, Olymp the, the Olympic team? She, she will. Um, during the relay, she could run the relay. Okay, yeah. So she can't. So when you was talking about her running in the one hundred and two hundred, what were you talking okay. about? Okay, she she was going to run in the one hundred, the two hundred, and the relay. So she now she has been suspended, so suspended. she can't run in the one hundred or the two hundred. She can only run in the relay because they gave her a thirty day suspension in her thirty. Which isn't up until July twenty seventh. Yes, and that leads to that actual game left. Uh, if you want in on this conversation, feel free to do so. The number here is 619-902-2287. Wait, 619-902-2287. Go ahead, Rubo. So you were saying that she could run on her own or well, something. What you no, said? she can't run on her own. She, she can't. She can't. It. So, okay. okay, so the 100. So all of us, we run. The 100, we're, it's us only in the single lane against whoever, whoever, but we're with, you know, the U.S. We represent the U.S. The 200 is us in single lanes. Boom. The relay, you know, the relay when you're passing the baton, that's like four. So I said, oh, okay. So she's not going to get, if they win, you know, she's not going to get recognized by herself like she would the 100 and She's going to get recognized as the U.S. team. She yeah, so it'll be like four for herself. She'll be recognized with the team, but not by her, for herself. Like she, Flo, like Flo. So what, I mean, but what is? I mean, but I don't understand. Like, because the thing is, she would still get a gold medal. So I don't yeah. understand what y'all, what y'all mean. I don't know what y'all talking about. Okay, was what it, I'm was saying. That, they pass. Okay, because they pass. I, I've read, I've read no, track. I mean, high school and college and when i'm when, what y'all saying is like if she can't race she can't race you're saying her suspension is up and she'll be able to race in, the, in that race in the relay what you're saying. But she yeah. won't be able to race in the individuals meaning she would get she was get a gold medal if they win for the team but not for her and she would not be recognized as the fastest woman in the world during right. the relay only yeah. the 100 and the 200 right that's what I'm saying. Because she is actually now the fastest woman, the fastest person in the world. Right now. Right okay. now. So um, I'm ho I'm rooting for the rest of the uh our girls well, that are doing it. it. Now yeah. I will say that um there are those uh who said that they're not gonna be watching if she's not running because they were rooting for her. Your choice. I wanna go be watching it anyway for real. Yeah, your choice. Anything. Um I want to go to Gwen Berry. Uh, let, let me start with um, Congressman Dan Crenshaw. You guys know him? No. Okay, well, Dan Crenshaw is a congressman who says that um, he was talking about Gwen Berry. Let me do it that way. Gwen Berry, during the tryouts, um, she turned her back during the national anthem. 
and she had a shirt and I think it said um, activists, something like that. Uh, but it pretty much say that the U.S. is racist. He feels as though that she shouldn't represent because she turned her back on the national anthem. However, allegedly, this is the same guy who was okay with the January 6th uh, ambush and said, felt that that was okay. Sit down, have what's, several seats, sir. Now, what's your thoughts on her turning her back, going to another country, turning her back during the national anthem? Everybody else is, you know, facing the flag. She turns her back. Matter of fact, she had her hand on her hip. What's your thoughts on that? You know, and her represent the U.S. I'm not mad at her. Why? Because the U.S. was represented all over the world for that insurrection. That certain people in high positions are okay with oh you're okay with them storming the capital and behind donald foolius yeah, orange foolius but you yeah I, man sit down have several seats and shut up please and thank you and he uh actually referred to the critical race theory rugo are you Dude, afraid? what did you think? What did you think January 6th was? Man, shut up. Just sit down. <laughs> sit down. Wait, sit privilege. Sit down. What's your thoughts, Rugo, on her? My, my thoughts are that if you really if you look at if you look at the Olympics as a whole throughout the years, there's been plenty of countries, and we talked about this before on the show. There's been plenty of countries that have been sanctioned. From not even from not even being able to 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 have a team, you know, to even participate because of things that they've done against their people, right? And, and those those aren't the athletes; those are just the 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 world community that's involved in it. Saying, "Yeah, y'all ain't doing right, so y'all y'all got to sit this out. We can't we can't have y'all here when this is happening, right?" Throughout the throughout the Olympics, though, there have been many, 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 many many testimonies or or uh, protests by people who go there they represent their country for the good and for the good and the bad but they're bringing attention to the bad of what has happened in this country is no different from when Jesse Owens beat the uh beat 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 the beat the Nazis or I mean they weren't they, they weren't considered the Nazi well it was Nazi Germany at the time right. it was no different when he went out there and beat and beat them right now he may not have done he he may he just beat them off a of sure ta sheer talent and I and I don't really have a clear uh, understanding of whatever whatever things that he did but just him being there and winning was enough to show that y'all are not superior in this in this way you know um then you had the you had the gentleman who won uh was it the 100? I forgot what they're, I forget. And I'm just because we just talking about this, I forgot the name. But um, maybe they, I got my people. Both, they were both. Anyway, they put their hands up when they were on the oh, podium. Oh, yeah, we talked about that. I can't even remember. Right, right you know. Now. Yeah. Um, the fist, yeah. Yeah, the fist. You know, uh, you had uh, Ali. I mean, he was an Olympic boxer, but he, you know, he ended up going, he, been, he got in prison because he protested the war. He was like, I'm not going to Vietnam and killing these people who never did nothing to me. Right. Like like there's there's been so many, you know, so even though he didn't do that during the Olympics, I, let me clear that up. Mm -hmm. But but the but the thing I want to say is that, like. Americans can't I mean, she's representing the country, right? Americans can't be mad because she wants to air the dirty laundry of the behavior of what's happening in this country. You, you can't be mad. You can't be mad at her for that. You know what I mean? You know, if it, if anything, you should be like, why is this Olympian, one of our best who are representing us, why do they feel this way? Let's understand what what, what her what her what her issue is, and her but her issue is an issue of disparity, prejudice, racism, and you know, and inequality that has existed in this country since it, since before its find found uh, founding. So, you know, there you go. So I mean, like, hey, it ain't. You know, do everybody do better? True. I'm trying to think of. Uh, I mean, she's. You know, she. I don't know. Yeah, everybody do better. But. Um, okay. 
I was right, trying to maybe first. if it's starting to be brought to the forefront and the world, I mean, the world sees it anyway with George Floyd and a lot of other ones, but start bringing more attention and more attention and more attention, it'll bring the heat on these people and these lawmakers. You can make a law against and make it a crime to hate on an Asian, but you won't, you still refuse to make it a crime, a hate crime for what they're doing to black, what these police are doing to black people. Well, well like, the thing really is, it, it's not. It's not that they. It's not that they don't think it's a crime. You got. You got half of. You got half of the republic. You got half of our. Um. Our. Our, our Congress, who don't want to. Who don't want to make it. Um. Uh, who don't want to make a commission to investigate the crime. Exactly, but you know? but it's okay for them to make that law for Asians. Like this country was definitely built on the backs of black people. Come on, y'all. From when they brought our folks over on the ship against our will. Now we built this country. They 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 died picking your your cotton and your sugar and everything else. Black folks died. Black folks was hung. Everything else we were not allowed to be educated. If they caught any black person trying to learn how to read and write and everything else or go to school at first, they hung you to certain things. And you still, people still refuse to acknowledge that or they want to tell us, oh, that was in the past. Oh, stop crying. Why are you bringing it up? You're race baiting. It's not race baiting. Just get it through your head and get it together. Like, I don't understand why. But, it, but but you want to bring to the forefront everything else. Come okay. on, man. Okay, let me say this. Um, she, Gwen Berry was actually asked prior to um, reaching the podium, they asked uh, if she will protest if she reaches the Olympic podium. And she didn't answer. She was like, we'll see. Well, the Olympics, they do allow protesting. However, not during the events. Because remember we talked about it, you couldn't wear certain shirts and all that other stuff, or on the metal stand. So you could protest down the street, around the corner, in the stands, but not represent. So she didn't do that. I mean, obviously she didn't violate it. She didn't violate their, their. She did. How? On the metal stand, because she was on the stand during the when she made the tryouts, so they feel as though that she did. She was on the podium. But at that point. So you can, like I said, the Olympics, they allow protesting, uh, but not during the events or on the medal stands, the podium. Well, what do, what do they do? They take away your medal after you win it? That's what they did with, with those guys. Remember that? Um, what was what was her name? Why? I'm trying to blame. I knew at the time of the show, but I couldn't remember. Um, the ones, remember they threw the fists in the air. They got their medals taken away from them. I don't think that they got. They got somebody got penalized. And you you look that up while we go on to the next one. Moms in the military. Now, I just got this hot today, hot off the press. They are looking to um, gain military maternity clothes. So a maternity, a military maternity uniform. And I don't see anything wrong with that. As long as they're not going to war, doing anything strenuous, give them an office job until they're done, you know, until they're done. But then some women can still do things, but you don't want to do anything that's going to harm the baby or make your pregnancy stressful. So yeah, give them something easy to do until after they have the baby and they can resume their normal duties. So I don't see anything wrong with it. Okay, now I want to say this. You said until. Now we know when you're in the military, you can be called to at any time. At any time. So do you say, oh, well, she can't go? And and I'm just asking this question. Oh, she's pregnant, so she can't go to war. How many men are we gonna have fighting? Because I think it's China that has more. Um, military people than any other country now. So if we got people out on maternity leave, what well, we got, you know what I mean? And I'm just exaggerating here. 
you probably say you have, I'm going to bring the number down so you can actually get a visual of what I'm talking about. So you got 10 people ready to fight. Okay. Five of them pregnant. She can't do anything strenuous. What's your thought? Yeah, that's, rough. that's rough, but it still will be the same way. Because even though you do have those, put, even though you do have those office jobs, when it's time to go to war, you off from that office. But the thing is, Mel, they me. go on maternity leave anyway. So you're still at the same. But you're, yeah, you go on maternity leave. And then you notice, you know, I'm sure we have family members. I had a ton. Once they have that child, it's like, my child is sick. I got to stay home. No. Somebody else is raising their child while they're finishing. Up mm -hmm. their I'm like, I, I got a few people that's doing that. So you're okay with the maternity, um, the maternity uh, uniforms? I need some military people. Talk to me. Like, what's yes, your thoughts? I'm because military. I remember I had Joanne Duran, and um, she was ex uh, military. She's an older woman, and she we talked. Matter of fact, probably like 2011, she came on the show, and I was so intrigued by her. And she said back then when they went um, to the military, they were considered trollops for females to be in the military. Uh huh. And she said, because men will go over. Now, for the sake of conversation, men in the military, women say, okay, I want to join the military. But now we're talking 2021. I want to join. It. So we're going back with her because she was, she was about 76, 77 back then and in 2011. So 10 years. So she's probably like 87 now. Um, if she's still with us. So it was a men's occupation. Women go. Now they want uh, a sterile area so they can pump after they have their children and pump their breasts for those who don't know what I'm talking about. And they want maternity clothing to, you know, they want the military to accommodate them with the maternity, you know, maternity clothing, uh, breast pump area, that type thing. What's your thoughts on that? Make it happen. What's, what's the problem? Okay. Because, because the thing is, when y'all, when you, when you, what I'm hearing here is an argument to saying like every woman that's in the military is doing, is in battle, right? Is in some kind of basic, is in some kind of training or something like that. I mean, those trainings happen and things like that, but there, there are many. If there, there, there's many, but I'm saying, we know when you join the military, you can be called to war at any time. That's what we have to be clear. So, so okay. basically, so, so you're saying at no time during this person's life, if they want to be in the military for 20 years and be a lifer in the military, should they consider having a family? That's not what I'm saying. Well, I'm, I'm trying to understand what because, you're saying. And I have some relatives, just as one, and you know, she, matter of fact, she just retired. She had two children, but is there somebody at home that can take care of the children? while you go, you know, if you get to called to war, if you get called to war. So you have that person or if they're a single, you got to have that stuff set up anyway. If you have kids, you what? You got to have that set up anyway. From, 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 from day one, if you have a child, you got to have somebody mm -hmm. who's going to be their caregiver while you're deployed. Right. And they usually come in. Well, as of today, I'm telling you, the came straight off the press. What's being asked is, you know, at work, they want a pumping, a sterile pumping area. Listen, I'd like to have, let us have one even where we are because a lot of mothers and I'm not even in the military, but just at the workplace, a sterile pumping area. And if their child is sick, being able to go home and maternity uniforms instead of just getting, I guess, larger ones. So they want a whole line. Um, I mean, the family medical leave that works for the job. 
What'd you say? I said the Family Medical Leave Act works for other jobs. Why can't it work for the military? That's a job. It, it does. It does. Oh, but it does, but yeah, this it is does. added. This is added. This is now being presented as of in the last two days. Okay. I support it. Oh. And, and every, I, I support, I mean, I don't see if I'm at an army base and I'm and I and 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 if if, I, if there's a woman who's at an army base who who needs to breastfeed for her child and she, I mean she's not in a war situation, you know I understand what you're right. saying there, but the thing is she could work in 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 dietary, you know she can be in there's so many branches of what you could do, and women yeah. it, some women work until they do date, you know what I'm saying? So while if 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 she if if she's a good health and and can do the work and, and the work that she's doing doesn't doesn't harm her child coming into this world what's the problem with making those accommodations like right. really it's a, it's an idea that probably should have been enacted a while ago because okay. I, I would imagine what the let, comfort let of, those accommodations need to be at the not at war at the any workplace but what we any workplace did, what we did was if we had to pump we would actually go like to the car um, and you would keep the milk. Remember I told you my one co-worker put the milk in there and guys from another department used to come and steal our creamer. <laughs> and they thought it was creamer that took our milk. I remember you saying something. <laughs> I'd have been mad. They took our milk, not all of it, but you know, she was, she worked and you know, 12 hour shifts. So she I would be ready to fight. And she was like, where is, and it was just the one, it was hilarious to me. We laughed. She even laughed. She was like, Listen, I that milk tastes different cream. now. And look, I bet you stay up out of our work exactly. area, our, look, our section. I our guarantee you. I bet you. <laughs> now, that's what you did. You had titty milk. Yeah. Look, how was it? You'd have sat there and drank the baby's milk. Um, and I, I know how you were going to feel anyway. I predicted it, Rubo, because... For the lovely people who don't know, Rugo got a paternity leave started. Now, now that's who you want. You want the go getter because it's always maternity leave. Rugo was like, "Ah, oh, let's spearhead this paternity." So, uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, matter of fact, you make me think about something else. I need to look into. But, <laughs> um, but, but the issue was was that at a place that I worked. They wanted us to review policy, and one of the policies that was up for review was the was a maternity leave. And I'm looking at it, and it was just like really biased based off of uh, sexual off of your uh, sexual orientation. You know, um, men had got less time, and it was like less time even if there was an issue with even if there was an adoption. So a woman would get 12 weeks if there was an adoption. A man would only get six, and I'm like, why? Why, why would that be the issue? Especially like when you think about the making, there are a lot, there are a lot of um, gay couples that may have children and, you know, want to have children and stuff and they, they adopt, but you're going to give that person who may only, let's say they're single, right? So they, so for, for them, it's okay for them to be able to adapt to that life in six weeks, but it's, but for a woman, it, they'll give her 12. So the, the um, what ended up coming about from this was equal time for everyone up to eight weeks. And then if you wanted to take an additional four, you could. See, I like it. Go ahead, Rubel, we'll making it happen but, for the you people. Know, but I mean, that was, I mean, that, that was this, I mean, it, it was just so, and the thing about it, I'm sitting there in this room because I'm like new to this organization. Uh -huh. And I'm just waiting. I'm like, nobody say like nobody saying nothing about this. Like nobody, you know. Um, and so uh I was just like, I wrote a letter to the uh to the to the president of the organization explaining my my position on it, you know, uh -huh. which uh you know went over well, of course, because they changed the policy and um uh, and, and noted that I was involved with that. So that was cool, but you know as life it, now you now you make me now i gotta look at some other policy now yeah, yes look at the policies and another and one. Like that now. look and revise them 
Uh, let's talk about how people feel. Uh, a lady from South Beach said that she's tired of the ghetto list. So I guess everybody going to South Beach, if she's, well, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but it was said that she actually said Black people are the most ghetto. This is alleged. But a South Beach lady said that she's tired of the ghetto ness coming to her area and just acting rude and ignorant. Now, here's where I'm going with this. Restaurant waitresses. So, I, you know, once I heard that, I said, okay, because hers was, you know, you get to the restaurant, you're all loud and all that extra stuff and obnoxious. It's just embarrassing and humiliating. Okay. Now, wait, I looked into it and there were some waitresses and waiters and they lightweight discriminate. And the reason I say that is because they said, usually when you get a loud bunch of ghetto, this was, there was no color with this one, of ghetto people who come into a restaurant they run from those tables because they said they're going to be very needy and they're not going to tip. What's your thoughts? Look at that siren is gone. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to wrap it up. Go ahead. What's your thoughts on that? If you don't want to treat people fairly in your occupation, please get out of it. Okay. This, this get out of it. This, I mean, I, I can go on and on about a situation I just encountered, but just don't, don't, don't work there anymore. If you, if you can't, if you won't, if you're not going to meet, every, if you're not going to assume the best when you're working with that, when, when you're working with the public, don't work with the public at all. Okay. You know, because, because the thing is, is that that same rowdy group may know that, they, that they're they going to demand a lot and may give you a bigger tip than what you expected because they know they rain. You know, they they ready to party. You know what I'm right. saying? So And it know, does, and you're absolutely right. Because I, I, I know every time, every time well, I'm, with, I'm with a bigger group, and not to say that my, my bigger groups are rowdy, well, one time, one time, <laughs> one time I went out, I was, I went out with coworkers and they was, man, er, they was, hey, they was cutting up so bad that people came to me, right? They came to me and was they like- They came to you at the table? They came to me and it's like, hey, can you can you have them like, you know, chill out or something? And I said, because I'm the only black person, right? I don't know why they came to me. Right? But I was, <laughs> they came to me. I guess <laughs> I look like- It was reverse. They probably was like, oh, wait. Let's... Yeah, they, <laughs> they came to me and they was like, you know, they were like, hey, can you, I was like, listen, I was like, <laughs> I told my table- because we were outside the patio, right? We're outside. And so they were kind of upset thinking that people walking in would be upset, you know, but it's like all these, you know, it's like a whole bunch of pictures of drinks and stuff on the table and everything like that. And when they came to me and I told them, I was like, listen, y'all, y'all know y'all acting up when the people is coming to the soul black person to tell y'all to cut it out. <laughs> you know, I said some other flowerful words, but I won't say, uh, you know, but the, but the point was, was that uh, it, it was a good time had by all, but I, I believe that that tip was pretty substantial. You know what I mean? Okay. But it was just funny how we got, cause people, man, they was, they was partying. You know what I mean? They was, they was partying. Like we should have, <laughs> It was probably about a group of like maybe like 10 to 15 people at a given time. Okay. And we probably should have seen if we could have got a room versus just being on the patio. But it was a party, y'all. I definitely was. Sound it wasn't like it. dinner. It was a party. I know if I was working, I mean, I if I wanted to be a waitress, I could still be, you know, work with the public. But if I see it's like if I see me and my crew coming, I'll probably be like, I'm going on break. <laughs> so, so let's so let's have I don't here. plan on working that hard. But, 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 but let's, what, what happens what happens when you get the people who um who want to come in with like Confederacy like t-shirts and 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 handkerchiefs and stuff like that? Do you not do you not serve them? Yeah, I serve everybody. It, if it's a party, just, if it's a party I'm, of two. 
if it's oh, so your thing is it's the number of people. The number of people. How many times I'm gonna have to run back and forth to that table? I'm just, I'm just saying, like, like people. I mean, people can make it. To me, if you don't want to do the damn job, don't do it. And, that, and that's it. I mean, not, not 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 in that instance. Just move out of that profession because nobody right. wants you there. Right now, see, remember I told y'all if I was a police officer. You remember what I said, Nick? Do you remember Rugo? I said I couldn't be a police officer, and the reason I'm not a police officer because if they if I got a call and they was like they're shooting on this street. I'm, you know, I'm gonna have my sirens on, but I'm gonna be on the next street over waiting for the gunfire to stop before I go rolling around. <laughs> That's why I'm not police officer. You're gonna so, be the one I'm gonna cut them off at the pass when they try to get away. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be out here. I I'm gonna keep the, the, the perimeter. You will hear the, the sirens line. and everything. You'll be like, the police is coming, but I'm gonna wait till the gunfire clear the air and then I'll go. So that's why Listen, you know, some of these fools don't care if they hear sirens or not coming close. They gonna keep doing what they do. And that's what I'm saying. I.e. that example, remember the girl that had the knife, she heard the, the sirens coming and it was outdone because she got, um, he did, he fired off that one shot because she had the knife going toward the other girl right there getting ready to get her. Remember that? That wasn't yeah, that long Columbus. ago. In Columbus. In Columbus, yes. Yeah, so some people don't care baby. about they don't care about the police at all. But that's just me. And that's I, why I'm not in that profession. Did they have sirens going when they came? The sirens, you know. can hear the sirens when he pulled up and then he got out the car. And she oh, still okay. was fighting. You know, so when well, you, well, when uh, you out, mean, yeah. you out. Look, I'm like, when you out, when you black out, you you out probably ain't heard nothing. I'm sorry, but when you come to my house, you're going to get what you get, whether the police is here or not. Because you ain't got no business going to nobody's house trying to fight. Hey, let's Whatever talk. happened with that? We got to follow up on we that. We got to follow up on going. it. We'll follow up. We'll get that to you guys next week. And the foster uh, mother so should be charged tip. as well. Tip. Is it optional or not? Go ahead, Rubo. It's called gratuity. Yeah, the tip. Is it optional or not? By, by the name of it, it, it doesn't seem to be optional. I mean, it seems to be an option. Okay, it's, gru Which, it's gratuity, ba you know, based on how well you do, gratitude. right? Yeah. That's your that's, gratitude. Let's look at the word gratu gratuity and see what it says here. Uh, okay, go ahead, Nick. What's yeah. your thoughts? Is a tip optional or not? Yeah, because it's, it's based on the service you get. Now, tell me this do you do the overall service or do you tip off of like, like we're judges and be like, okay, well five on that i'll give you a 10 on that 10 on appearance 10 on you know what i mean do you tip on the overall service or do you break things down the meaning the amount the, the overall service meaning even the food yes you like, can't add you can't add the food in there because, because it's the cook right the Right, there's a cook. Your server, you are only supposed to actually break it down according to your server. Is she neat when she comes? You know, how her appearance is when she comes to, you know, is she polite? Is she attentive? Is she, is she doing her job well? That's what you tip on. You don't tip because your food was nasty or wasn't done. That wasn't her fault. Now, she I don't will care. say this. Now, some restaurants, I think it was Red Lobster, so your server did a great job and you want to tip your server, they have to split the tips at the end of the night. I don't know if Red Lobster still do it, but they used to do that. I didn't think that was fair. No, it's not fair because you're tipping the person who is serving you. You ain't tipping nobody else. Everybody else tip isn't it. getting it, tips. So you can work it, really hard and you have to share it. I don't think that's fair. Go ahead. Uh -uh. Um, I'm, I'm trying to look up this thing because it's saying something interesting, but for some reason, my computer is really lagging. Okay. Um, but basically it says like this, the department, the department of uh, industrial relations uses the word tip and gratuity interchangeably, meaning that they have the same definition money, a customer voluntarily leaves for an employee over the amount due, uh, due for goods, goods sold or, or, or services rendered tips are the sole priority. I mean, property of the, of the employee and are not, and, and are never to be, and I can't get the rest to pull up. Jesus. See, okay. They probably listening to me talking about putting their tips together. 
Now, so that would mean from by that definition, it would mean that it's optional. Um, if you want to know where tips came from, I want you guys to go back and do your history because that was where uh, our people used to go and attend to tables and the tip was their pay. So that, that, that comes from way back where you had our people serving and if they got a tip, thank you, you did a good job. Now, they, they, they wouldn't need to rely on tips if they would go ahead and raise their wages. Okay, well, listen to this stuff. Listen to this. Did you know that you are to tip on the pre-tax total? Not the tax total, the pre-tax total. Were you aware of that? I thought it was the whole total amount. Well, I could I could understand her rationale based off of that because why would I uh, uh, give you a tip based off of tax taxation? Yep. You know what I mean? I can uh, I've never did that before, but I can understand the like I used to say, "Hey, what did the bill come to?" Right, and then it's like the total. They say what it is, and here you go. I'm not I'm not tipping you based off that. Nope, pre tax. Yep, that pre. Tax. And you know, a lot of these folks, though, they add the gratuity to you how much, like 15%, 18%, 20%. They they put it at 10%. They put it all on the bottom and let you pick which one you want to give. Now, I appreciate that. But see, here's the thing. I might not want to give. Thank you. Now, I had some terrible food at Old Charlie's. I put it out there. Old Charlie's in Columbus. It was disgusting. However, the waitress was amazing. And she, she was excited to get back to work due to COVID. Everything was, you know, locked down. She was excited to get back to work. She was a college student. I think that's what got me. Her being a college student, trying to get her money up. And she asked, you know, how was the food? I said, it was terrible. However, that's not your fault. That's the cook. I said, now, whoever the cook is, I wanted to speak to the manager. And I let them know how I felt. And the manager was like, well, um, we can... We can go ahead and um, have them make it over for you. I said, absolutely not. I don't complain about the food and want you to remake my food. Uh -uh, I'm okay. And then she was going to take it off the bill. I didn't even want her to do that because we were already shut down for COVID. So I paid the bill and I tipped my waitress very well. She was such a sweetheart. And she's in college. <laughs> I'm like, she's in college. So it was like, here you go. I said, but y'all need to... Fire, you know how they be like, fire the DJ? Fire the cook, because they fire the cook. they're terrible. But yes, um, you want to tip on pre-tax and do what it is that you can do and don't feel obligated because let's be real, once they had the, um, you know, I do do this though. I get carry outs, then I ain't got to worry about a tip. However, after COVID, I have, I have yeah, I, you know, you're not there. I'm not eating there. But after COVID, my lens have become clear and knowing that, okay, these people have been off work and that's my thought. And I'm at work and my other coworker was like, they got unemployment plus an additional 300, making more than me. I said, Oh yes. But the college student that, that gets me because you know, we do the scholarship. You, you know, we do, you know, they know we do ask wait, 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 wait a minute. But you know, we do the scholarship with shop talk with mail. So I am the softy when it comes to college students and trying to work and go to school. Go ahead. And she actually was back at work. Y'all can't find nobody to go to work now. Go ahead. They actually at, do like on receipts and stuff. When you're going through, if you're going through like certain places, drive throughs they still expect a tip. If you, you know, like, is you use your card you got to sign a thing they give it to you out the way and it says tip i tipping you and i'm driving through it, it's it's printed it's just in there already yeah. it's in and i'm driving through yeah i hear you how about those restaurants and i need the lovely people to look at it i went to a chinese restaurant and at the bottom it had covid tax you gotta I'm watch it talking about that remember you gotta watch it and it's on others COVID tax. Hold on. You're going to charge me an additional $5 because the world shut down? 
Why is that my fault? Guess what I did? I returned it. I don't even want it. Give me my money. I want my money back because you're not going to upcharge. If you upcharge me, put it on your food. And then I'm like, okay, the prices went up and I'm more apt to pay it. But to put at the bottom a COVID tax, you got money for it. But they got money. Are they it. even allowed to do that? Exactly. Are they allowed to do it? Here's the deal. You don't have to pay for it. And so people just look at your receipt, see it. And if you're paying with a card over the phone, ask them, do you charge an additional tax for COVID or whatever y'all gone through? That is my determining factor if I will utilize that facility anymore or that restaurant or whatever you're purchasing. I'm like, hold on, you didn't even tell me this. You know how they said read the fine print? I'm gonna need to read the fine print. I'm gonna need to read the terms and conditions. Then that'll determine if I wanna pay the $5. Because that COVID tax, it's not, some of it was a dollar, some of them $2. That's crazy. You trying to make a come up off of me and I'm hurting too. This your business. You chose to do this. And why should I have to pay? Go ahead. Well, did you get it? It's still trying to come through. Oh, well, 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 um, but basically, basically what they're saying is that employee, supervisor, and managers, they can't share in those tips, but employers can make it possible for uh for what they call a uh a share or a, a pool for taxes amongst other employees. Oh, see, I would quit because so, you, you had that slacker. You're not going to yeah. sit over there and be a terrible waitress. And then I did and put all of my heart and soul but, in but, this and got my big tip. I guess the rationale with some of that, though, and I didn't see this here, but I had a friend who used to deal in a casino. And I guess their tips were split like that too. So would it, some of the tips went to the bus boys and stuff like that. People who are doing services for the for for the uh, for for the guests, but are never recognized for it. Like you know, most people don't tip the bus boy for cleaning up their mess, but we'll but we'll tip the waitress for bringing us water. Now, now, now here's the thing. I have seen where the waitress takes everything away. But I did see where the busboy will come after because I will have a separate tip. It's one of those restaurants for him. So I understand what you're saying. You know, but somebody have, wash those dishes before you eat off of. Yeah, I hope you do good. Somebody vacuum that room. Because what's the first thing we do when we go in the restaurant? Oh, this restaurant is dirty or clean. Oh, I don't know if I'm eating here or not. I'm right. out. Listen, I yeah. had an experience and it used to be where Carabas used, used to be at. That was the nastiest restaurant. You talking about Chili's? I mean, not Chili's. Um, Chili's was before the Carabas, but it's no, it wasn't. Else. It wasn't Chili's. It was. Uh... Well, not long ago. Okay, because I was I was about to say Chi Chi's. Oh yeah, Chi -Chi's that's what I meant, Chi Chi's. No, but after remember you wasn't supposed to be eating them green onions because something happened to that, and then Chi Chi's went downhill. Mm -hmm. But whatever it is now, I went there, and it was a bus boy. I gave the bus boy the waitress tip because you're going to bring me some tea with, listen, I don't know if she was nervous, but you know, you had a saucer underneath. The saucer was underneath. She brought it over to me. I guess she, it was shaking. It was all on the bottom. The sugar, everything was all wet and she wanted to serve it to me. And then I was like, excuse me. She was like, yes. I said, it's all over here. It was hot water. You know, it had the tea, the tea bag was wet, everything. It was all over there. I said, mm -mm. and she was going to, she was going, she served it to me. If I had not said anything, she thought it was okay. So I called the manager immediately. I said, I went out of her section. And I did move out of her section, but the bus boy who had to clean everything up and I didn't eat anything. And I went there with a friend for her birthday, I, but I paid for her because that was her, she chose the place. And I said, I, I'm not eating anything, I'm good. Call, and I just sat there and just, you know, we just conversed and so, entertained, but <laughs> no, your server, like, how do you, you know that that's not okay to serve a spilled drink all in the saucer, but you still chose to give it to me. That's, to me, that's disrespect. Just how I feel about the artist 
who's up there with a t-shirt and some jeans on it'd be like an old black t-shirt like get out of here your t-shirt is faded and you come into a concert and i didn't pay 40 dollars to see you and i'm dressed better than you and you just up there hopping around on the stage no that's disrespectful i'm not doing it so this is what they you mentioned service charge before yes so service charge a service charge is a different is different from a tip again a tip is a voluntary amount uh, left by a customer. Okay. In contrast, a service charge is a mandatory charge required by the customer for some special service or uh, possibly or possibly because of the size of the party. A service charge is not the property of the employees. Rather, any employer can, at, at its own discretion, determine the uh, distribution of the mandatory service charge which will be included in the employee's hourly rate of pay for calculating overtime payments. Oh, so the big party at Red Lobster, the service charge is what they split. Yeah, or you know, they've like, oh, you got, you know, you got a, you got a party at ten, you're gonna have to pay, you know, ten percent or whatever they do or whatever, you know. Oh, well, we'll all go and just sit at four tables in the square. Don't order. Everybody just get water and biscuits. Right, right. Or, or say separate. <laughs> well, we're not ready to order yet. Uh, you want some more water and biscuits, please? Thank you. <laughs> oh, the whole time. Not ready, not ready, not ready. The entire time. Off the chain, off the chain. World. Wow. Well, it is that month that everyone's been waiting for. I need some excitement. Go. It's July. It's July. And in July, what does that mean in America? That means blockbusters, blockbusters, blockbusters. So what we currently just have released, which did gangbusters at the theater that drove on into the theater and dragged Ray Stone out with all the money was um, the uh, Fast Nine, which I Is thought was hot trash. Right? Yeah, uh, it's the ninth installment of a, of a franchise I am not a fan of. Okay. Uh, I actually had this conversation with my son, and he's like, well, why did you watch it? And I just said, because I wanted to see how terrible it was going. I was I was wanting them to prove me wrong. Okay. And and they 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 failed to do that. They I mean, they they they, <laughs> they did they that. Fa they failed to do that. They failed to prove me wrong that they're terrible movies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just my own personal view on that. I know uh, the views of Rugo's movie critique are not the views of Nick the, the Voice or Mel or uh, Shop Talk with Mel's uh, host and creator, <laughs> <laughs> Bell Ross. So, um, but it was this, um, yeah. Um, I don't know why they keep making them. I, oh, because people keep, keep spending money. So to that effect, they had the biggest box office in the last two years over the first weekend where it pulled in $70 million US. Not to mention it was making some great strides internationally. I think at the China box office, it had about $200 million. So okay. it's, it's it may be the thing that brings people back to the theaters. Um, yeah, um, it didn't say it had to be a great movie is a movie that may bring people back to the theaters and this may be it. Uh, coming up very soon though, is the uh, wildly anticipated um, Black Widow movie, which will, which will be uh, seen, which will be out on Disney Plus or in the theaters on June 9th. So I'm up in the air on this one, if I'm gonna go to the theater or not to see it, but I was thinking about getting it on Disney Plus. It is a, a extra $30 and that debate comes into play. Like, well, if you're already paying for a subscription, should you pay for this? And then how long will it take for it, you to actually see the movie once that that uh, that time period elapses? you have to pay extra, even if you have the subscription? Is that a service tax? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a <laughs> like, oh, yeah. what are we doing Yeah, here? that's a service charge. That would be a service charge. Uh, yeah. Being raked over the coals. Uh, so uh, th th this is uh, yeah. So that that's going on, and I'm. But when you, if you have HBO Max, you can't watch the uh, Warner Brother releases same day on on uh, HBO Max. No additional charge. And I have been pretty occupied, but I do want to watch In the Heights. 
In the Heights, it was a Broadway play that was created by Lynn Miranda, uh, Manuel Miranda that wow. is now a uh, feature length uh, musical and on uh, HBO Max, which I have not had an opportunity to watch yet. But that that is out there. And on a small screen with people, if you're like me, then you like some Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty has come back for his fifth season. So far, we're about three episodes in. It's been over, it's been okay, you know? Okay. Looking forward to, to more of that. All right. That crazy cartoon, Rick and Morty. Yeah. Hey, oh, Nick. You don't like Rick and Morty? Why? Next segment, Nick. Do you have a small business? Yes. Who are we featuring today? We are featuring Posh Creations Bakery. Miss Rashonda Martin is the baddest person around town that makes cakes. Um, you can actually find her on Facebook and IG at uh, Posh Creations Bakery. Her, you can email her, Rashonda Martin at hotmail.com. And also, you can call her, 330-951-5797, if you need a cake made. And when I say she is bad, she is a bad girl. Y'all have to see her Freddy Krueger cake. Oh, you said Freddy Krueger. Oh, the detail. Uh, again, what's her website? Her, um, She's on Facebook and IG, Posh Creations Bakery. You okay. can find her on Facebook, Rashonda Martin. Her email again is Rashonda Martin at hotmail.com. Okay, what if we don't and have Facebook or social media? How can we reach her? 330-951-5797. Let me make sure that is correct. Yes, 330-951-5797. I'm right. telling y'all now, y'all got this Martin. Rashonda Martin. Yes. And you know what? I'm familiar with her. And if you do not live in the area, she can mail you the cake. And she also can deliver the cake for a service charge. Exactly. You know, that, and, you know for a fee. Uh, today's show, Shop Talk with Mel, is presented by, our sponsors are, the Cool Boys Foundation. Cool Boys Foundation, Cigars and Sundresses, August 14th, 2021. Uh, the entertainment is the Michael Austin Project. Tickets are $75. That includes one cigar, food, and an open bar all night. Again, the tickets are $75. It's the Cool Boys Foundation. And this fundraiser is for scholarships of young men. Uh, okay. The way you can purchase your ticket is uh, via, what is it, Everbright? Or Eventbrite, talk about Everbright. Eventbrite. Eventbrite, and you can visit their website at Cool Boys. That's B O I Z Foundation dot org. Again, Cool K O L L Boys B O I Z Foundation dot org. Visit the website and check them out. Let me tell you something. This is my kind of fundraiser. All right, and it's great for couples. And if you aren't a couple and want to go you know, and hang out and walk around in your sundress, ladies, or your guys want to smoke your cigars and watch the beautiful women in their sundresses, feel free to do so. August 14th, 2021, Cigars and Sundresses. All right. And again, Eventbrite in, let me see, Cigars and Sundresses, and also the website. Me, I'm a websiter. So I will go there and that is www.coolboysfoundation.org. This event will be held at the Soap Gallery downtown Youngstown. And this is a fundraiser for young men. Let me give them scholarships. They do definitely do good. My Frankie Halfacre uh, voice, a little good in the neighborhood. All right. All right, $75 a ticket. It's a great outing for couples, my kind of thing. I love a, fun, a good fundraiser. I ain't even gonna lie. I love a good fundraiser. That means I gotta find a real, real cute sundress. Find yourself a cute sundress. Listen to some Michael Austin. Rugo, do you smoke cigars? What? 
I, I partake in the practice from time to time, but I'm not like a like a connoisseur of like, you know, I know this and all that kind of stuff. Like I get invited to to venues where I have friends that are very uh, astute about the, uh, you know, what's out there. But I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a collector or anything like that. OK, you know, yeah, not really. I mean, yeah. Are you the camaraderie the is, cigars? What's that? The, the trading of the cigars? The trading? Yeah, you know how people come, they give you a cigar, you try this one and that one, the whole you know, Yeah, they the might introduce that. me to they might they may introduce me to something or whatever like that. But I'm not this I, I go I go for the fellowship, not not necessarily the tobacco. Okay. All right. Nick, you and your husband going? I'm gonna see if he his it's hard for him to get days off. Let's see if he wants to. Put it to in now. It's July. Out. This is August the 14th. Exactly. See if he would like to partake of that. Okay. And it is 7 to 11. I don't know if I mentioned the time. So again, cigars and sundresses, August 14th, 2021, 7 to 11. If you like jazz, Mike Austin is a bad boy. So it's the, mm -hmm. Mike, the Michael Austin Project live band. And I want to put this out here for all of my listeners. listeners. This is not a black thing or a white thing. It's a fun thing. And together, let's have a good time. All right, lovely people. That is my time. I thoroughly enjoyed you as I do each and every single Saturday. Thank you for giving me some of your time. That I know we can't get back. Find you, embrace you. Most importantly, always, always love you. Until next week, people. Shut up. Right here on yourspeaker.com.